Hi everybody and welcome to the September 2020 update for the Kirkby and Ashfield 38F micro layout. Uh, as you can quite clearly see not very much has changed at all at the shed end but down here well the bridge is back and I'll explain why. Uh, here you can see version 1 of the layout and the bridge was used as a scenic break between the off scene and scenic area. Uh, looking up from the bridge today it's quite clear what I've done. Uh, we're going back to the original format of an off-scene uh, fiddle yard area which leads straight through obviously into the scenic area so we can move trains on and off the shed uh, and put things uh, over on the back road under the shear legs and that sort of thing. Um, overall size of the layout then will be extended to 6x1 from the 5x1 we've got now and there's enough room here to put a large locomotive uh, in comfortably on a sector plate. Uh, right, so the bridge itself, uh, it's been under a few changes and um, I had to have a good think about what type of bridge we're going to have and the style and design to fit the, the region and the period. Uh, decided to stick with the original bridge they had in version 1, uh, we'll just modify it to uh, suit the space. So as you can see here, uh, marked out the, where the hole's going to be and uh, started playing with different ideas, should the bridge be a bit of a sharp angle, you know, blocking the view for the... Uh, non-scenic area and that sort of thing. Uh, in the end just cut the hole out, uh, made a few alterations to the level of the track work to make sure the uh, rails are all level with each other uh, and then started playing with different configurations um, on the parts of the kit. Uh, decision still to be made whether I'm going to keep those sort of the wings that uh, hang out at the front as uh, support sort of bits off the buttresses uh, or whether I see here I'm going to remove them and leave it just flush fronted. Either way uh, the brickwork has been done, uh, I'm rather pleased with how that looks now and so that's all ready for fitting as and when the sector plate is done. Remember that tree from the last update? Well, it's now gone. Uh, instead, I'm going to have the brickworks over in that bottom corner. Uh, brickworks have chimneys and this sort of thing, so I made a chimney out of some inserts from till rolls wrapped up with some super quick paper uh, and it just stands in the corner there, look, and it covers the uh, the crack in the sky where, where the two bits of uh, backing paper meet. The brick paper uh, used for the building itself here is actually a scale scenes kit, uh, which came free in a magazine. Uh, it's been modified a fair bit and it tried to make it look a bit older and as though it's a bit run down and possibly even closed. Uh, there were quite a few brickworks in the Kirby area uh, while the pits were active, uh, and so I thought it's a sort of uh, building that probably should be seen on the layout. I think it fits rather well in the corner and I'm relatively happy with it. Uh, one thing that will change here is uh, in front of the chimney itself and that building there will be plenty of trees and bushes and bits trying to create a sort of bit of forced perspective so it's not as obvious those buildings are as close to the bridge and the railway as they really are. The control panel area, uh, that's also changed. Uh, the control has been removed as you can see from the hole at the front and the switches are also going to be relocated onto a separate panel which should be mounted across the front of the layout uh, so it's easier to sort of get in with everything and I can extend the scenery then from that bank up to the bridge. Had a question recently, uh, what's the track plan? Well this is it. Uh, in essence it's a tuning fork uh, with a siding up the side. Uh, it could also be used as an ingle nook if I wanted to, you know, pushing wagons about but basically just for the locomotives it's uh, a shunting plank and nothing else. Again, a reference to a previous video, uh, I mentioned I had a couple of locomotives missing. Uh, unfortunately, neither of them have been recovered, but I have bought another A5, and this is it. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on it too much in this video, but I just thought I'd show it off a bit because I'm rather pleased with it. Uh, and uh, we'll come back to that in a, a future update. So here's an overview of the layout then, uh, looking down from the shed. And as you can see, the scene has taken a bit of a change. I'm rather pleased with it, and it's obvious there's still a bit of work to be done, but uh, so far, so good. Massive uh, shout out now, and a big, big thank you again to my very dear friend Dave over at uh, Tinsley TMD. Uh, he's bought me a present, and this is it. It's a 16E shed plate, which is the real code for Kirkby and Ashfield uh, from 1963 up until its closure in 66. Originally Kirkby was actually uh, 16B, so obviously it was quite important to the Midland Railway. Uh, but as I'm modelling the LNER part of the area, not the uh, Midland, uh, I'm sticking with 38F. But uh, a huge thank you Dave, I really do love it mate, and it's now living in the kitchen on the wall.
and that is it. Uh, so I'll leave you all by saying you know, thank you for watching. Uh, hello and thank you to all the new subscribers that's recently joined the channel. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far and uh, hopefully enjoy what's coming up soon. So thanks for watching and bye for now.